Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to talk about actor Lloyd Avery and his crazy story. Lloyd was born Lloyd Fernandez Avery II on June 21, 1969. Lloyd, along with his three other siblings, including a brother named Shea, grew up in a good environment. They grew up in a working class neighborhood. Lloyd's dad was Lloyd Sr. and his mother Linda made sure the family was always straight. They grew up in a middle class family. Lloyd Sr. was a hard working man. He had many skills. He was a qualified plumber, an electrician, and an expert carpenter who operated his own business. His wife was even a stay at home mom. So you can say the family was doing pretty good. Lloyd had an easy life, according to his little brother Shay. He would say they were silver spoon kids, that they always had whatever they needed and didn't grow up in a struggle like most people. They even had grew up with a pool in their backyard. The Avery family was raised in a Christian household. Their parents also made sure that their kids knew a school was important. So they always was in programs and always was in good schools. Lloyd would even go to school at Beverly Hills High School where he would graduate when we all know that's a rich ass school. Some of his closest friends were kids of some celebrities like Quincy Jones, Smokey Robinson, and Clarence Avant. After high school, Lloyd would go to Los Angeles Trade Technical College, but this wouldn't last long with him dropping out. After this, Lloyd worked alongside his dad, but he didn't want to follow in his dad's footsteps. Lloyd had a passion for music and entertainment, but his dad disapproved. In 1992, up and coming director and writer John Singleton had a movie in production called Boys in the Hood. With him as a director, this movie would later become one of the first depictions of the hood to America on screen. The cast was made up of local people to keep it real and show a real look at the South Central LA. The film followed the friendships between Cuban Gooden Jr.'s character Trey Styles and Brothers Doughboy played by Ice Cube and Ricky played by Morris Chestnut. Lloyd would land a role being credited as Knucklehead Number 2, but in one of the film's most memorable roles. Lloyd's character was a blood who crew had an issue with the three main characters resulting to Lloyd's character and his crew pulling up on Ricky and shooting him. Lloyd enjoyed his newfound fame. He hired an agent and went on numerous auditions. His future seemed bright. During this time period, even his music career began to take off as he produced Push, the lead single on actress Tisha Campbell's debut album. Lloyd's acting career kept progressing. In 1992, he acted in a show called Dookie Hauser, MD, playing the character named Red. Then after this, he developed a good relationship with John Singleton. He was casted in Singleton's follow-up Poetic Justice in 93. His new role of Thug Number 1 would be similar to his role in Boys in the Hood. Basically playing another gangster who did a traumatic shooting in the scene, he starred alongside his brother Shay, who played Thug Number 2. This movie starred Janet Jackson, Regina King, and the late Tupac Shakur. After the release of Boys in the Hood, Lloyd did something everybody around him considered shocking. Bro moved away from his middle class home to the jungles, an area known for being a rough hood and the home of BPS, the Black Peace Stone Bloods. Lloyd seemed to embrace the culture of his new home, being the life of a blood. Lloyd's friend Keith said the first time Lloyd revealed he was a blood was when they were shopping at the Slauson Swap Meet, when they was approached by some Rolling 60 Crips and Lloyd repped his hood. The 60s realized who he was and gave him a pass. Just like Lloyd, his little brother Shay was a good student in school, being an honor roll student and to being accepted to UCLA and UC Berkeley. But just like Lloyd, he became a game banger, becoming a Rolling 60 Crip. These dudes went from good families and good lives to cripping and blood. Shay would later get caught up and serve some time for some robberies. Both Lloyd and Shay wanted to be gangsters and Lloyd wanted respect in his hood, so he was willing to do anything to get it. He would even get the jungles tatted on his face. With his life and his career not going the way he wanted, he dove deeper in the streets. It is said Lloyd rarely prepared for auditions if he even bothered showing up at all. He wouldn't appear in anything until three years later. In 1996, he appeared in an unaccredited role in the Wayans Brothers 1996 comedy film, Don't Be a Menace in South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood. The film was a parody of movies like Boys in the Hood, Poetic Justice, and Menace to Society. In the small role he had, Lloyd played a guy in the back seat in what would be his last actor role for the next four years. Lloyd life spiraled and he ruined all the help and connections that he had. He had a big falling out with John Singleton after disrespecting him several times. Quincy Jones III distanced himself from Lloyd after Lloyd's game banging and his personality became different. Bro basically started acting like B-Rad on Malibu Most Wanted. Lloyd emerged back on the scene in February 1999 in an unaccredited role as Man in Jail in the comedy film The Breaks. By March 1999, Lloyd stayed in issues in the gangster life. Lloyd fled the jungles in April 1999 after what was described as an altercation with the members of the Nation of Islam. He cleaned out his apartment and stayed at his grandma's house from then on. 
1999, he became more involved in the crazy incidents. January 1st, 1999, Lloyd would shoot two people. Lloyd approached a woman named Antoinette and a man named Percy who were sitting under a tree near Santa Barbara Plaza. After a short argument, allegedly over a debt, Lloyd pulled out a strap and started firing at Antoinette and Percy, who was shot in the stomach. Antoinette lost her life later that day, and Percy died three weeks later in the hospital. Lloyd didn't go into hiding after the shooting. Instead, he went on to film two movies while on the run. He booked a movie role in the movie Lockdown, and 13 days after the shooting, Lloyd was on set filming. Lloyd was standoffish with the whole staff. He never mixed with anybody, and he stayed away. Lloyd would attend one rare event, and he ended up fighting one of the lead actors. He was on set acting a fool, starting altercations, and getting into it with several people. A director of Lockdown would even say Lloyd would get into it with rapper Master P, who acted in the movie, and his crew. They wanted to beat Lloyd ass, he would say. Lloyd was causing so much trouble, Lloyd had several scenes cut and was later eventually fired. Despite this, Lloyd started attending auditions again and even wrote a movie script titled G in the Bottle. Things started to appear back on track for Lloyd when he landed a role in the movie called G-Rod in 2001, an independent low budget film which tried to show the streets of South Central. Lloyd once again started to bully and intimidate people on set, including the director several occasions he promised he would take the director's life. Lloyd knew the police had been looking for him. Him and his brother Shay was hanging out one night. Lloyd would say, I had a good life, like it was the end. The next day, police had been looking for Lloyd and they spotted him. Trying to get on the bike, he then was smacked by a police car and was arrested for the shootings. In jail, Lloyd would become a Christian, but he was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. He arrived at Pelican Bay State Prison in March of 2001. During his time there, Lloyd kept out of trouble and was mostly preoccupied with his religion something that would ultimately cause his death. Lloyd's cellmate was a man named Kevin, who was serving a life sentence for taking his sister's life. Kevin and Lloyd's views were different. Lloyd tried to preach to Kevin, but Kevin was into Satanism. Kevin warned Lloyd to stop doing it on September 4th, 2005. Their disputes got real. Kevin choked Lloyd unconscious, causing him to bleed in his lungs, taking his life. For multiple days, he sat in a cell with Lloyd's lifeless body, fooling guards on count time, and even eating Lloyd's portions of the food. Even with the corrections officers doing a terrible job, five of the officers involved were found guilty of misconduct. Worst thing that happened was that they only got some pay cuts. This left Lloyd's mom furious. Lloyd could have had a promise in life and a bright future, but him making mistakes and becoming something he didn't have to be contributed to his crash out and demise. This was Lloyd Avery's story. This will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like and comment and subscribe.